hope you tied your hands, Vince. <laughs> How could you do that to <laughs> them? My name is Yvonne Pine, story of my son Vincent Pine. I had Vince uh, November 21st, 1981. Vince was a very active child. He would never sit still for nothing. As he got older, he would torment his sister and his brother, just like normal brothers and sisters would do. He was always in trouble. The principal was calling my house every day. Vince did this, Vince did that. I told him, I said, Vince, come on now. Mom's got to sleep and you got to grow up, you know, but he always was a joker, joker all the time. He got into rapping at 13 and he rapped all the time. Vince was 24 seven rap all the time, but Vince was very good at rapping. He went out, got his driver's license renewed. He bought new clothing. He was ready to go on a ski trip that weekend. Thursday, Vince was gone. That morning, I had worked midnight turn. I had come home. It was in January. It was a nice sunny day in January. I remember it. I came home and I took a shower, got into bed, I heard my phone ring. And by the time I got to my phone, it stopped ringing. I said, oh, well, whoever it is, I'll contact them later. I believe it was about 1230. My niece and my mom came to the door, knocked on the door, and my niece said, we have an issue with Vince. And I go, oh, God, don't tell me he's in jail or something. She goes, no, he's dead. I about fell through the floor. Who would ever expect somebody knocking on your door, telling you your son's no longer here? I was devastated. You know, and that was a Thursday. Thursday was Mom's Day. Always called me on Mom's Day. He was off on Thursday and Friday. He always called and we talked for hours. And he told me what he did during the week and what was going on in his life. And he was a kid that he confided in me with personal things. That morning was just so devastating. And then from there, we went over to the where Vince's body was found. And at that time, they was, the coroner was taking him out. And as um, soon as I went in that house, I grabbed Vince's 
comfort coat and I wrapped it around me and I could feel warmness through that coat and it felt like he was hugging me. At work they'll say, God, I'm having a bad day. And I go up to him and I say, you know what? No, you're not having a bad day. A bad day is when you have to go pick a coffin out for your child. That's a bad day, you know? And they go, wow, that's unreal. You know, I never thought it like that. But I said, yeah, I used to say that too. I used to say, man, I'm having a bad day. I don't say that no more. A bad day is when you've got to pick a coffin out for your child and lay them to rest. That's a bad day. I was just so devastated, you know. You're here today and gone tomorrow. Who? I mean, this kid had plans. He was planning on going on a skiing trip. I mean, he talked about it on Facebook for months. He was going to go, and then he's gone. They claim that Vince took his life, but I don't believe Vince took his life. I believe someone took Vince's life because things just didn't add up. Vince had bruises from his ear down to his jawline. His knuckles on his hands were all scuffed up. He had a big bruise on his nose. The coroner's report told that Vince had no marks on his neck, but Vince did have a mark on his neck. Everybody saw it at the funeral home, and it went from here all the way around, and as if he was strangled, not hung. They said Vince's death was a hanging. I have no clue how Vince could hang yourself when your hands and wrists and thighs were tied. How do you do that? And I talked to authorities about it, and they still said they have to go by what the coroner ruled. The coroner ruled suicide, they have to go with that. I contact Mike DeWine. Mike DeWine told me to contact Trumbull County Commissioner. I told him the story, and he said, Miss Pine, it sounds like your son did not commit suicide. He even believed what I told him. So from there, I kept knocking on doors, asking questions, and Nobody seemed the one to help me. I started investigating with some detectives. They called me in, we were talking about the case, and they really didn't want to open up the case because the day Vince's father found him in the garage, he moved Vince's body, and he, what he did was he moved the evidence. And the neighbor guy from across the yard came in over there, and he started on doing things that was on Vince, that was tied on Vince, he started taking them off. So by the time the authorities got there, everything was off. That's why they went ahead and ruled it as a suicide. But I still say that Vince was murdered because as I was going through things, I was threatened. I was threatened. I was told I had to stop what I was doing or I would be laying with Vince. For two years, I would go to Vince's grave and there would be a car sitting there watching every move that I make, every move. So whoever, did this to my son, I believe they come to his grave. I really do. And this is, this is scary. That's why I think my son was murdered. There was a certain person that tried to convince me that Vince was depressed, which I knew that was a lie. He tried to convince me that Vince's father did this, which was a lie. It was unreal what this kid did. It, it, it showed that he was guilty of something and I still say he had an involvement in it. And I will not repeat his name, but um, one day it will come out. And I hope that this case is solved before I die. I wanna know who, what happened to my son that day. I don't believe Vince took his life, I really don't. Because Vince was, he enjoyed life. He was constantly going fishing. If he wasn't rapping, making, a, writing songs, he was with buddies. I mean, Vince was, he was constantly going and doing things. He loved life. People that love life do not take their life. I'm sorry, but they don't. And what do you miss most about Vince? Oh, everything, everything. He was always connected with me, regardless. I mean, if he was on this side of town working, he would always stop in, have a cup of coffee. If I had biscuits or something on the stove, he'd grab a biscuit and we'd sit there and talk. It's just missing him, period. I mean, him saying, Mom, what's up? How's everything going with you? And, you know, just everything in general I miss about him. And there isn't a day right now that I don't get up and think about him every morning. Because I do, because 
I feel Vince's presence around me and I've caught pictures of Vince in my backyard. I've seen Vince plain as day. I mean, he was in his same clothes that he died in and he just looked at me and then he, next thing I know, he was gone. He'll turn my TV off and on. He'll turn my microwave on. He's just letting me know that he's with me and he watches over me. You know, he was a mama's boy, let me tell you. He was my second child out of three. And he loved, he loved his brother and sister, his nephews. He loved them like they were his own children. Him and Vince talked about suicide one time and, and Vince said, boy, he said, there was no way I would ever do that. He said, there's always somebody out there you can talk to. He said, you don't have to take that drastic measure in killing yourself. So that right there tells you that boy wouldn't took his own life, you know. His hands and wrists were tied in front of him. It was a, um, a strap that you pull a car with and it had two big hooks at the end. That's what was used on Vince. His hands were tied, but they got untied by the neighbor. But they still put in the report that his hands and wrists were both still tied. But they didn't put that his upper legs were tied. So that's what I don't understand. If you're going to kill yourself, you're just going to hang yourself. Why would you tie yourself up and then hang yourself? Right. Long part of it was wrapped around his thighs and the hook was wrapped around to the back. The reason why I know this because when Vince's father left the garage, he went to the neighbor and a neighbor came over and they started moving Vince around. They undid the hook and the wrapping of the legs and, and the hands because he wanted to see Vince's hands. Why he did that, I have, God only knows why he did that. He should have left Vince as he was. But I have talked to several police officers and they said, there is no way you can hang yourself with your hands and wrist and your thighs tied. There is no way. And there was no chair, no ladder, nothing near Vince's body. So how did they heist that strap up on the rafter? How did they do that? There had to have been a couple people. You can't do that by yourself. And they had the strap wrapped around his neck about four or five times and uh, he had a hoodie on the coroner told me the reason why Vince didn't have no marks on his neck because he had a hoodie on and I said well that's not true this long strap it was it was his wrists were tied and his hands were tied and, and the rest of this long strap was up around his thighs wrapped around his thighs they put him in a corner the police did and took a picture of him. I have no idea why the police would do something like that. I mean, why would you? Why would you move him? What, why would I you? I mean, you're not supposed to move him. Exactly, why did they put him in different poses and take pictures of him? That was wrapped up around here and then hooked onto the strap. And see, they got him laying this way. He was laying this way when they got there and then they put him this way. They said, well, we really don't know. Evidence was taken away when Vince's body was moved, so they really couldn't go on by what was going on because nobody's supposed to move a body when it's dead, and it was moved. I believe Vince was strangled with a cable cord. He had a bunch of it there in the garage where he worked for DirecTV. He brought a bunch of supplies home. He had it there in the garage, and next to his body was a bunch of boxes stacked up, and. I have pictures that show this, the boxes are all like scattered, like there was a scuffle right there. There was something going on. These boxes, there was a fight or something there because all these boxes are leaning. They're not straight or nothing. So I do believe that there was some foul play that morning. When you lose somebody, you don't think. I mean, the only thing that's on your mind is what happened to them, you know, what happened to him? And I don't, I still don't believe that he took his own life. That morning he died, this person, he knew too many things about Vince that morning and he wasn't around, he claims he wasn't around, but he knew a lot about, he knew a lot, more than I can say, he knew a lot.
about that happened that morning. Now, how do you know what went down if you weren't there? And what would be this person's motive to kill Vince? He was jealous of Vince. He was very jealous of Vince. Vince had it going on, and he didn't. He wanted to be Vince. The day after Vince died, he went over there and was still in Vince's clothes. He wanted to be Vince. He told my grandson that he was taking Vince's clothes. Now, why would you take Vince's clothes unless you wanted to be act like Vince? It was just a mess. This is the day after my son died, and I had to deal with this. You know, my mind wasn't even in the right place at the time. And I had to deal with somebody like this going over there, stealing my son's personal items, and then wanting his clothes. Vince lets me know he's here. He'll either turn the TV off. I have cameras on the outside of my house, and he'll either move the camera around. And especially at night, he'll do that. You know, I'll be sleeping three o'clock in the morning, the camera's moving, the alarm's going off. He lets me know he's here. One night, it was so funny. I was on the couch and I've actually felt him touch me right after he died. I was in the bed and I was just devastated. After I, the funeral, I came home, I just got into bed and I could feel heaviness on my body. And the next thing I know, I felt someone put their hand around my wrist. And I know that was him, because I felt him. At times, I'll start feeling the tightness around my neck, and I'll have like a, a heaviness in my chest when he's around sometimes. And I, that's how I know when he's around too. You could hear Vince's voice on there, and I'm like, wow, this is real. And last night, I was on the couch watching TV, and, and I could hear whispering. I hear whispering and chattering all the time, constantly, to where sometimes I can't sleep. I turned the TV down and I heard him say, Mom, I love you. So um, he was letting me know that he was here. But he let, he's here with me all the time. There must be a reason why. I think his death is unsettling. He was upset because people believed that he took his own life when he didn't. So, you know, I think that's why Vince is still around. He's got a message to tell. And I'm hoping to get closure today to find out what really happened to my son. Ever since Vince died, it's like I've had this big hole in my heart and it's, it's, it, it just feels like it's, it's not closed. I'll have it till the day I die. You know, but you never forget your child, never, regardless how good they are or how bad they are or whatever. Your child is your child, you know, and you'll love them no matter what, no matter what. Him and his father got into an argument that morning. His dad got up, went to turn the TV on. There was no cable. Vince worked for DirecTV, so he got up ranting and raving at Vince because there was no TV. Well, to come to find out, there was no TV, there was no phone, no, there was no internet. Why? Why wasn't there none of that stuff going on? All the neighbors had theirs, so I said, was there a wire cut? Was there a wire cut that morning on that stuff just so Vince could get up and maybe go outside. He was planning on fixing that cable, and then I, I, he was planning on coming here, but he didn't make it. The neighbor guy told me that morning there was, on the, on the opposite street facing Vince's house, there was a direct TV van sitting there, and there was nobody there. I went down at the neighbors, knocked on the doors, and asked them questions about if they saw a van sitting there. And the one lady, she said the van was directly across from her house. She said that van sat there for at least three hours that morning and there was, she didn't see no worker working on nothing. But the van was sitting there. But she said she didn't see nobody. I believe one of Vince's co-workers did him in. Because the lady said that she seen nobody on poles or nothing. So there was no ladders 
the van was sitting there with nobody in it. Where was, where was the driver? Where was the worker? Nobody had seen him. Guy that we were talking about earlier, was he, did he work for DirecTV? Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. And I believe that was his van. The neighbor guy told me that this person came there every morning, every single morning, even on Vince's days off, he came there every morning. Now, why wasn't he there that morning? He claims he wasn't there that morning. Why not? He was there every other morning. And you don't think that his father had anything to do with it? <sighs> that is unquestionable because um, he gave two police statements, two different police statements that morning, which was, I found very curious when I went through the police report. I have pictures that they took of Vince in the garage and I have the police report and he gave two different statements. And he said, this is very weird, I don't know who would do this, but he said when he went in the garage, he seen Vince there and he ran in the house and got a knife and came out and cut Vince down. Then he went back in the house and took the knife back in the house. To me, I wouldn't be taking no knife back in the house. I would be dropping that knife as soon as I let go. I would have dropped that knife and it would have laid there until the authorities came. I wouldn't have took no life back in the house. That just seems odd to me. He said that he heard Vince talking to somebody that morning and he thought he was on the phone. I don't know what to believe. I mean, I hope Vince's father didn't have nothing to do with it. Vince did not commit suicide. So I don't know if his father knew who did it or if he was involved. I don't know. My hope is to find out what happened to my son. I want closure. I want to know what happened to him that day because in my heart, I know Vince would never do this. And even his closest buddies agree with me. They said, no, Vince would never do this. Okay, so we're going to start the investigation. We've been here pretty much all day with Yvonne, learning about Vincent. She has brought us in to hopefully make communication with Vincent or whoever may be in the house right now. So we're going to keep Vincent's mother here with us during the investigation because he's probably more likely to reach out to her versus one of us. And I think you said you've already heard. I just went in the bathroom and when I was in there, I heard him say, Mom, I hear his voice a lot though, especially when I'm here by myself. I hear a lot of whispering, but mumbling, I can't, sometimes can't figure out what he's saying. But last night, last night he made it clear. He's like, Mom, love you. So I heard that plain as day last night. But sometimes I can't. I'll go to bed, lay down in there, and I can hear somebody whispering, but I can't make out what they're saying. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and start here on the main floor. We've got alarms in the basement and in the bedroom. And we'll see if we can get whoever's here to communicate with us. Whoever's inside the house right now, if you can see or hear us, can you please give us a sign and let us know? Can you hit something or move something? Vincent, are you in this house with your mother? Can you please give us a sign? Earlier we heard knocking. Can you do that again for us, please? Do you want to try asking something? Vince, are you here? If you are, give us a sign.
I keep hearing like a faint walking in my audio. I just can't tell where it's coming from. Are you in the house, Vince? I heard you a couple minutes ago say, Mom. Could you set our alarm off in the basement? If you walk by it, it'll go off. Are you here, Vince? Let us know. Any spirits inside this house? We believe that we've seen you and heard you earlier. Or felt you and heard you. Because you guys had that cold spot in here, right? Yeah. As his song was playing, I felt the cool breeze come up and I could feel the coolness standing beside me. Can you come in here and let... Let us see you or hear you. If you're here to try to communicate a message to your mother, we've got equipment that can help you do that. And that's why with the footsteps and stuff, it seems like it's also like faint. Yeah, it's real faint and it's coming through. We want to try to figure out what happened to you the day that you passed away. There's some people that believe it was a suicide, and there's others that believe that you were murdered. Can you help us find those answers? I'll tell you, walking through here, you know, just throughout the day, the basement just seems like it's got a different energy to it. Mm -hmm. So I think if we go downstairs and we just sit at that picnic table and ask some questions. Okay. You got the spirit box on you, Rocky? Yeah. Have you run a spirit box session? go off so don't get too okay. scared. We'll just go over by the picnic table. Vincent, are you down here with us? You can walk past our alarm. Something's over here. Can you set that alarm off for us? You said he used to stay down here? Yeah, he used to sleep down here. Watch TV and everything down here. Vincent, or whoever's in this house, I've got a device here that you can communicate with us. So if you would, please come forward and talk to us and we can help figure out what happened. If it is Vincent, I know your mother's got several questions about what happened that day. And this would help give her some peace of mind. Can you hear us, yes or no? Yeah. 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 
Did you commit suicide the day that you died? Can you tell me who we're speaking with? You want to ask anything? Vince, this is Mom. Can you talk to us? Hi, Pop. Are you there, Vince? Vince, can you hear Mom? You're upstairs. Can you come down here with us, please? smelling smoke. Benson, are you here with us? Where are you sitting? Are you by mom? Can you hear us, Vince? Mm -hmm. It is getting colder. Yeah, it's getting colder. Keep talking to him. Vince, this is Mom. Mom wants to know what happened to you, honey. Can you tell Mom what happened to you that day? Did you pass away? I can feel it. It's definitely gotten colder down here. Yeah, I can feel it on me. Vince, did George have anything to do with your death? Vince, are you with Leslie? Sound like I am. Vincent, did your dad have anything to do with your death? Can you tell us how you died? Is it choke? Who choked you? Do you know who killed Vince? Give us their name. Vince, how did you get tied up? Vince. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like he came across said Vince. He's coming across clear asking questions. Vince. Tell mom who did this. Who was in that garage with you that day? Who's all of us, Vince? What was his dad's name? Vince. I love you. Vince, did your dad kill you? Vince, how were you killed? Who tied your hands? Vince. Oh, oh no way. Dad. That was clear as day. It's okay. You okay? All right.
you some tissue. <laughs> what are you thinking? How could you do your son's life? How could you do that? <laughs> What's wrong? I knew it. <laughs> I felt it from the beginning. I felt it. I wonder if there was somebody else in there. He just said, Dad, tied him up. God's name, how could you do that to your to anybody? <sighs> and now I know I know why that morning that morning after his death and I was in that house with his dad, he was beating on the door because he probably didn't want me to end up like him, you know? I told him I wanted a divorce. He threw me in the floor and he picked up a 20 pound weight and he said, I'll bash your face in if you ever leave me. So when I left him, I left without him knowing. How was that? There's something about talking. Somebody's. There's somebody. I don't know. There's a guy. Vince, is that you? He took my boy away from me. <laughs> he took... His dad's name's Vince too? Yes. So the Vince we were getting across earlier might have been saying he did it. He was getting ready to die. He was in hospice. He told my daughter he didn't want to sleep because when he did, he had the awful nightmares there was. And I'm sure he did. Yeah. This is the most terrifying, terrible thing I've ever heard in my life. I just feel that coldness around me right now. Vince probably wasn't even hanging. He made it look like Vince hung, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With his hands and stuff being tied and stuff. I think I think if it was accidental, I mean, he'd have had bruises, markings of bruises. He did have bruises on him, but he didn't like Vince because Vince was a lot like me. And I told you, I would tell you the way things were, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he didn't like that. And Vince was just like me. And no matter what that kid did, he never believed a word he said. He was always in denial with him. This is just terrible. He took him away from all of us. I miss Vince because we always had our little talks, and I missed talking to him. He would always tell me what was going on with him, and I'd tell him what was going on with me, and, you know, we had a nice thing going, you know. Mm -hmm. He's here with you, though. Yeah. And I think that's why he's here, because mm -hmm. he knows that I miss him so much. Yeah. And it's... Uh, 
This is mom. I love you and I miss you every day. Honey, I'm so sorry what happened to you. I'm so sorry. Just remember your family loves you and we think about you. And you shouldn't be where you are today. Miss, are you okay? Are you okay on the other side? I worry about you. Even though you're gone, I still worry about you. Take a break real quick and... I'm sorry all this happened to you. I know. Be sad when you can't even be safe with your own parents. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> my brother said all along he believed that my ex-husband did something to Vince, and he was right. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it was George because he was so suspicious. Vince did everything he could, and his dad still... He, this way his father was. He did me the same way. That's why I left. I mean, ultimately, that's what we want you to be at peace. And, you know, I think Vincent wants you to. He knows that for the last four and a half years, I had this on my mind and wondered what happened to that boy. And I knew he didn't take his own life. That boy loved life. I knew something bad happened to him that day. A mm -hmm. mom can feel it, you know, when there's something wrong with your child and you know your child. I knew Vince very well. I mean, probably more than other mothers know about their sons. I knew Vince, I could tell every time when he walked in this house and there was something wrong, I could tell. A year before he died, this is what he came to me and said. He said, Mom, what father looks at you and tells you that he wished that you was never his son? And I told him, that's an asshole. And I told him, get out of there before something terrible happens. And he didn't. He stayed because he cared about his dad and he worried about him. And this is what happened to him. I think that's, you know, a big thing is, you know, it's like, you know, kids, they're always wanting acceptance, you know, from their parents. And, right. You know, no matter how bad somebody could be to them, you know, you always want that acceptance. Exactly. And you know. Vince always wanted that from his dad. He did. Yeah, I think we need to take a break and I just want you to be okay, you know? Yeah, I just... It just devastates me that how a father could take his own child's life. I am glad that you showed up and I'm glad that I have gotten to know that what really happened to my son. You know, I now I have closure. Now I know that my son didn't take his own life in which I didn't believe anyway. But now I know that it was taken away from him. But I never really thought it was his dad. Never in a million years. I mean, people come to me and suspected him, but I thought it was his cousin. But it's sad. It's sad. It is. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I know. It's hard. So we're here for you if you ever need to talk and all that stuff. Thank and... you so much. All right. It's just, I'm, I'm just so devastated. You know, and and he told me that they would never find them. Them is what he said. And he said they'll die of old age. That's what he said. And the guy I was dating at the time looked at me real strange. 
And I said, why would he even say something like that? Because he knew. He knew exactly what happened. 